Hello, in this section, I will introduce you what is an integral and an indefinite integral. Also, I will explain how you can get f double prime or f, pr f prime of x to regular f of x with the help of integrals. So yeah, so what is what is an integral or they also call it an antiderivative? Uh, here's what's the book's definition. A function f is an antiderivative of f on the interval i if f prime of x equals f of x for all x and i. So basically, an integral is the antiderivative, if that makes sense. So it's also um, later on when you'll, um, we're going to learn about um, Riemann sums. Um, basically, it's an area under a curve. That's also an integral too. Um, yeah, so if you have a polynomial, it's basically um, area under a curve. And as you can see, um, they have on this curve, they have boundaries from zero to three. So the next thing is um, you're going to learn is what's called indefinite integral and definite integral. So you might heard hear of what it um, indefinite and um, definite integral. So basically indefinite integrals don't have boundaries. So this is where you have to do the plus C. So um, yeah, so for example, um, and this little squiggly S line is representing integral. So the integral of three X DX, and then I will I'll later explain what the DX means. Um, so that is an indefinite and a definite integral has boundaries, um, which for example, the integral from one to two of three X DX, and that leads to the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we will not go over this section. It'll be another, another lecture. So when you have a definite integral, you don't have to add the plus C, you actually get a value, like an answer, like six or 20. Um, yeah, so that's the difference between indefinite and definite integral. So for right now, for this lecture, I want you to understand that if you have an F prime or an F double prime X, you can find regular F of X by taking the integral. It's the same thing in the phys um, physics world, not physical world, physics. Um, you can get um, positions, velocity, and acceleration if you take the integral. And then, yeah. So it's like kind of like going backwards. So uh, before we do some pro um, examples, I want to go over some notations for antiderivatives. Um, so y equals um, integral of f of x d of x. So the f of x is what's called the integrand. The d of x is called the variable of integration. So basically it's um, what are you taking um, the integral in respect to? So it could be x, dt. It could also be dt, ds. Um, it's what you're taking the integral in respect to. So, um, and then the C as this only applies for um, indefinite integral, um, you always have to add a plus C. If you don't add a plus C, if it's for an indefinite integral, if you don't add that plus C, it's, uh, you're gonna get marks um, cut off. So um, so here are some basic integ uh, integration rules. So the integral of zero of D of X is gonna be C, so yeah. That's why you always have to add that plus C because there is like invis like at the very end there is an invisible zero somewhere. The integral of the constant, so like it doesn't have to be K, it could also be X, right? You have to add, um, I mean, a constant and meaning a number, not like, not, at, not a letter. So like it could be integral three. Uh, here, let me show you an example. So like, let's say you had the integral of three dx, then it, the answer would be three x plus c. So you just have to add an x in the c. Um, this rule states like if you have a constant, you can take it out and then um, take the integral. So for example, let's say you had three x uh, dx, right? You can actually, to make it, you don't have to do this, but um. It can make your life easier. Move the constant to the left, and then um, take the integral of x, which we're going to talk about next. 
Uh, this one, integral of f of x plus g of x of d of x, you're basically breaking it into several parts. You can do that um, if that makes it easier, but you don't have to. You could just do it all at once. And then this is the most common um, one. So um, let's say you had a power, like integral of x to the certain power. What you have to do is it's not, uh, you add one from the power and then whatever that power is, you divide it by, put it in the denominator and then plus C. So let me find, let me show you an example real quick. So let's say you had the integral of x squared, you wanted to take the integral of x squared dx, right? So the rule states it's going to be x, and then it's n plus 1, so our n power is 2. So you're going to add 1, so 2 plus 1 over whatever 2 plus, put the 2 plus 1 in the bottom, and then plus c. So that would be um, 2 plus 1 is x third, and then on the bottom, 2 plus 1 is 3. So you can say it as x cubed over 3 plus c, or you can also say 1 third x cubed plus c. Okay, so either way, either of those answers works. So let's do example one, find the general solution of the differential equation y prime two. So basically they want you to find what regular y is. So to find regular y, you could just take the integral of this. I know that sounds weird, but um, it's gonna be, so y equals the integral of, two, and then you have to add the dx. You always have to add that dx. So what is the integral of two dx? It is a constant. So with constant, you just put um, an x or whatever this letter is. So if this was a y, a t, you would put a t. So it's going to be two x. And then because this is indefinite, you have to add the plus c. So you're fine. So to find y, you're basically taking the integral of y prime. So that would be your final answer. Okay, let's do um, example two. Find the antiderivative of 3x. So we said that antiderivative is the same thing as the integral. So basically what they're saying is take the integral of 3x dx. So what could we do here? Well, I see a three, that is a constant. You could put that outside and then you can write this as x dx. Then what you could do is um, you gotta take the integral of regular x. So this x does have a power of one. So it's really saying x one plus one over and then one plus one is two bracket and then plus c. And also don't forget that we did take out a three as a constant, so put that somewhere out on the outside bracket. So when you simplify this, this is gonna be three x, and then one plus one is two over two plus c. And that will be your final answer. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Let's do example three. Um, you can um, you can split it into two parts, meaning you can rewrite this as x dx plus the integral of two dx, right? And then um, you know that the integral of x dx is one half x squared, right? Because this has a power of one plus the integral of a constant is just going to, you're just going to add an x. And then don't forget the plus c. Okay. Let's move on to example four. So they want to take the integral of this polynomial. It is a polynomial, so you can break it into several parts, or I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to just do what, do them individually. So let's start with 3x to the fourth. What is the integral of that? So it's 3x, and then it's going to be 4 plus 1, because you add 1, 
And then on the bottom is just four plus one. And then what is the integral of negative five x squared? It's gonna be negative five x and then two plus one over two plus one. And then the integral of regular x is, this has a power of one, so one plus one is two over two plus c. Okay, then well, let's just simplify this as much as we can. So this is three x to the five over four plus one is five minus five x and then two plus one is three over two plus one is three plus x over two. So that's like saying x two over two plus c. Okay, so that will be your final answer. Okay, example five, that looks kind of strange because now you're having fractions. So the integral of x plus one over all over radical x dx. So what I would do is break it into two, so you're dividing each term by radical x. So yeah, I would definitely break it so you can rewrite this as x divided by radical x plus one over radical x dx, right? And then um, if you want, uh, this is x. And then maybe we it would be helpful if we put it in power form. So what is radical x in power form? It's the same thing as x to the one half. I don't know how um, I don't know if that will make it easier for you. Okay, then let's simplify this. What is um, what is the rule when you're dividing? This has a power one. What's the rule when you're dividing with the same base? Um, what do you essentially do with the power? So when you're dividing with the same base, you subtract the power. So we're still not taking the integral; we're just simplifying it. So let's simplify this. What's one minus one half? Well, one is really saying two over two. So that's like saying one half. So this is going to be integral of x to the one half plus um what is one over x to the one half? Um really you can I think it would be a lot easier if you use a negative power. So this one over x to the one half is equivalent to saying x to the negative one half parentheses dx. And then what you're going to do is take the simple power rule. So, so it's going to be 1 half plus 1. Well, 1 is the same thing as 2 over 2. So this is saying um, 1 half plus three, 2 over 2 is the same thing as 3 halves. So put that at the end. Plus, and then x to the negative 1 half plus 1 or one is the equivalent to saying two over two in our case, divided by, and then if you simplify negative one half plus one half, that is one half, right? So if you clean this up, um, this is x, one half plus one half is three halves, divided by three over two, plus um, negative one half plus two over two is one half, plus one half, and then plus C. So this, we have a complex fraction. Um, if you want, you can, if it makes it easier, you can rewrite this X to the three halves divided by three over two, if, if that makes it easier. So if you cross multiply, this is two X to the three halves, and then one times three is three. The same thing with this, um, it's x to the one half divided by one over two. You cross multiply, that's two x to the one half over one. So this is plus two x to the one half. And then don't forget the plus c. And that will be your final answer. Okay, now let's do something slightly different. 
Example six says solve the differential equation. Um, so they give you two things, f prime of x equals four x, and then they give us f of zero equals six. So did you know that this is really a point coordinate? The input is like the x, and then the output is like the y. So this is like saying zero comma six. Um, what we want to do is find, I think we just want to find regular f of x, right? Regular f of x. So how do you find regular f of x? You take, so to find regular f of x, you take the integral of 4x dx. And then we're get, remember how we had a plus c? Well, we could actually find that c value by plugging in this point. So let's simplify. So what is the integral of 4x? Well, it's going to be 4x, and then this has a power of 1, so 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2 plus c. So this is going to be 4x to the second over 2 plus c, and then f of x. And then this could be simplified as 4 over 2 is 2x squared plus c. And then um, now we're going to figure out what the c value is, or c1, because you can have multiple different c values. I mean, like c1 and c2. But we only have c1 because it's regular f prime of x. So this is like your x. The 0 is like your x. This y is like your 6. 6 is like your y. So we're going to substitute. Now, f of x is like really the same thing as y. So we can replace f of x with 6. And then it's going to be 2. And then we can replace x with 0. So this is 0 squared times 2. That's 0 plus c. So you get c6 equals to c. Okay. So you found your c value now. Um, so you're, if you look up top, um, we have to f of x equals 2x squared plus c. Well, we know our c value, so your final equation can be expressed as f of x equals 2x squared plus c or 6. Okay, let's do the last example. OK, now we have double prime. So f double prime of x equals 2, and then f prime of 2 equals 5, and then f of 2 equals 10. So this part here is a coordinate, right? Like saying um, 2 comma 5. And then this here is also a coordinate. That's like saying 2 comma 10. So let's find, um, we can't just go find f of x. We first have to find f prime of x, which is the integral of this, right? So the integral of 2 dx, we always have to add a dx. So what is the integral? What is the integral of 2 or a constant? Well, you just add an x and then plus c. Okay, and then um, we're going to use this point. So we said that um, we got to find our C1. So at this 5 is like a Y. So you can replace that with Yeah, you can replace that with 5. And then this X is like a 2. So 2 times 2 plus C1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus c1. Solve c1 by subtracting 4. I get c1 equals 2, 5 minus 4 is 1. So um, we know that f prime of x is going to be 2x plus c1, which is 1. OK, so now we've got to find regular f of x. So to find regular f of x, we take the integral of this.
Okay, so the integral of 2x is 2x, and then this has a power 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, and divide that by 2, plus the integral of 1 or constant is going to be x, and then don't forget the plus c. Okay, so f of x is going to be 2 over 2 is, well, this 2 is canceled, so you're left with x squared plus x plus c. And then um, let's find, or c2, because we already have, we found c1. So let's find c2 by plugging in these points. So 2 is like your x, 10 is like your y. So f of x is like y. And then this is 2 squared plus 2 plus c2. So 2 squared is 4 plus 2 plus c2. 4 plus 2 is 6 plus c2. And then solve for c2 by subtracting 6. Um, 10 minus 6 is 4. Okay, so we found our c2. Now we can finally figure out what f of x. So f of x is this. So f of x equals to x squared plus x plus my c2, which we figured out, which is plus 4. And that is your final answer. Okay, so that wraps it up for this section. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.